question I seem to get asked most often is how do I make my Raspberry Pi available online to the internet? People have been creating websites and different things and they want to publish them online. So this video is a little bit unusual compared to some of the normal stuff I do. It's a very theoretical, PowerPoint driven and unfortunately um, video on the theory behind things you might want to think about on how to get your Raspberry Pi online. I haven't been able to do a step by step video because every single person's network equipment is probably going to be different from each other's so I can't go through and show you how to set up yours because it would be different from the next person's. So no doubt um, the internet trolls are going to be out in force on this video and they're probably going to disagree with many of the things I've said. Uh, because it's such a huge topic and there are so many things I've had to miss out, um, some of the things may not make sense in context and if they, if they don't, please leave, leave comments and I'll try and clear it up as much as possible. Let's get on with the tutorial. In this simple setup, on the left hand side we're going to have our Raspberry Pi and on the right hand side we're going to have the internet. In the middle we're going to stack a normal simple router with an ADSL modem on it. When we have our Raspberry Pi, connecting to the internet is normally fairly easy. Most home setups will just allow you to easily connect to the internet. But if you want to connect from the internet into our Pi, normally these systems will block you based on things like firewalls and those type of things. So here we have a typical home network setup. On the left hand side we have um, our internal network which can have all of our mobile phones on it, PCs, laptops, Raspberry Pis, all of our computers. And then on the right hand side we have the connection between our router and the internet. Now I've given my Raspberry Pi the IP address 192.168.0.10 and um, when that tries to communicate to the internet it wouldn't necessarily work on its own because that IP address could be used by millions of other computers in the world. Very much like if everybody had the same phone number you could never make a phone connection. So what happens is your modem is given a unique IP address that is assigned to your um, router. So essentially like getting a phone number assigned to you. What happens is if anything in your network, any network device tries to communicate to the internet, you get your connection is hidden behind um, your router. So any connection you make would look like it's coming from this 82.157 address. And this is what we call NAT or hide NAT. So um, NAT stands for Network Address Translation. So this network address gets translated or converted and hidden behind this address here. So most homes will be given a single IP address. That could be dynamic, so every time your, re your router reboots, um, it may change. But businesses will have multiple IP addresses, and they're generally static and stuck, so they have a permanent IP address assigned to their business. So let's briefly look at TCP ports, because it can be quite useful. If we want to um, set up a web server, that would be listening on TCP port 80, if it's a clear text um, website. If it's got a secure element to it, it would be on port 443. If you're running an email server, it would be on port 25. And if you were um, making an SSH connection, it would be on port 22. Um, these ports are essentially um, numbers that are assigned to particular types of functions, such as web servers, email functions, SSH, that type of thing. And these are preset and defined. Now understanding a little bit about TCP ports is really um, helpful in this scenario because if you've got multiple devices on your network, so you say you want to have two Pis both running a web server, but you've only got one public IP address, you're going to run into a bit of a problem. So let's have a quick look at this scenario. We have users on the internet trying to connect into a, a website we're running on our Raspberry Pi, and they're going to connect in um, port 80 or 443. And we're also going to run um, an email server on port 25. And um, we have our public IP address here and it can run on um, port 80 and at the same time it can run um, listening on port 25. Because these services are separate and they're different, they're not going to conflict with each other. So each connection that a user makes on the different services are going to be appropriately connected to the same Pi but for those appropriate services. However, if we add the new Pi to the network um, and it's also listening on, on port 80, there's going to be this confliction and because they're both on the same unique IP address with the same port, the, um, the router is not going to know which one to direct it to and you can only run one at any one time so you'd have to decide which one you wanted to go to. Now we understand a little bit about TCP ports. Um, if we have an environment where we only have one public IP address, so a normal home environment, what we could do is we could say um, for our first connection we would send it to the standard default port 80 but for the next connection we could send it to a different port, port 8080. Now the user would have to manually enter this at the end of the URL so and it would simply just look like this. Go to your browser, type in your IP address, you don't have to put the port um, 80 in because that's just default but if you wanted to go to the non-standard port just do colon 8080, hit enter, your site will load. 
So our first Pi would be running on port 80, and our second Pi would still be running on port 80, but the router in the middle does the intelligence. So what it says is if you have the first connection comes into port 80, we send it to this Pi, and if we have the second connection coming in on port 8080, we send it to this Pi. All of this is configured and done on the router or your firewall or a bit of both, depending on what type of equipment you have. So unfortunately, this is what I was saying um, that I can't teach you, which is how to configure your specific router, because they're all different. And you can see here there are three examples of three completely different looking interfaces. But I'll show you one example that hopefully you can apply to whatever you've got. So you can see here we have um, our port forwarding settings under NAT and port forwarding. And then we're going to have two different applications, web server and web server alternative. So we've got a standard default port 80 for our website and our alternative TCP non-standard port on port 8080. And that's going to be translated. Um, so if the first connection goes down to 1.100 and the next one goes down to um, 1.101. And notice how they're both listening on port 80. And that's a simple connection and setup on how you may do that on this particular type of router but the theory should hopefully be very similar to whatever you may have at home. So let's take a moment to look at security. If you put your Raspberry Pi online and you've managed to finally make it available to everybody in the world to view a website that you've created there's a chance there's going to be hackers that are going to try and compromise your system. What they'll do is they'll log onto your website, they'll run a bunch of tools, a bunch of things and if you're software is not up to date and there's possibly a security vulnerability into it they may be able to compromise your system so because you've allowed them because they are on the internet through your router and to have direct access to your um, Raspberry Pi via a website um, they may be able to compromise that now you might think well that's fine no big deal I can just unplug my Pi reformat it maybe make some changes to my software and I can block them out on um, you know the vulnerability and update my system and, and secure myself against that vulnerability the problem is if they've compromised your system and you've not been made aware of it, you might have other things in your network such as laptops, maybe a, a storage array that has you know, private and you know, family um, photos on there. And from there what they're going to be able to do is launch attacks into your internal network and compromise your laptop um, and they might steal your pictures, they might compromise your systems, they might just go in and delete things from there. And that's not a great thing so we need to protect ourselves against that. So we have our normal setup here with our external connection, our internal network, and we have our on our internal network we're going to have our Pi, our NAS, and our laptop. Now, um, what we can do is we can create a third type of network, which is a DMZ. That stands for Demilitarized Zone. And what we'll do is we're going to move our Raspberry Pi onto that. Um, the way you do this physically is you'd recable your switch or router. M not everything is going to support this. You can't just change ports though. You're going to have to go into your router setting, find if they support um, having a third um, network, the DMZ, and then configure your router specifically to allow you to do this. So you might be wondering, what's the whole point of this? Well, what essentially is going to happen is um, because we have these two different internal connections, you're going to actually have to route the connection between here. And one of the things we can do when we're going across networks and actually being forced to talk through an, a physical device is we can throw up a firewall in between these networks. So the laptop and the NAS can communicate without having to go via the router, but the Raspberry Pi and the laptop have to go through the router to be able to talk to each other. And we can throw up a firewall which we can then control what traffic we allow um, through there. So if our Pi does get compromised on the internet because we've allowed users to come straight into here without any control and that hacker then tries to get onto your devices, that can be blocked by our firewall and we can say no connection originating from the Raspberry Pi is allowed to go through to here. However, if you want our user to go to our Pi, so you want to internally connect to your Raspberry Pi, you are allowed through because you're on the authorised list. but legitimate safe users from the internet are still allowed to come through to your Raspberry Pi. So the last thing you're going to need is to know your public IP address. Browse to www.whatismyip.org and there you go, it will tell what your IP address is. So I hope that's all made sense. Um, if you guys have got any questions, please leave them in the comments field below and I'll try to reply as many as possible. And um, thanks for watching. 
as I can't cover quite everything on this video, I've done a guest spot over on the Geek Girl Diaries YouTube channel on how the internet really works, and I go through a bit of internal networking and a few routing things. So if you'd like to know a bit more about that, pop over there and hopefully that'll explain a bit more detail. So feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter and like my Facebook page. Cheers.